Well, welcome. And let me begin by asking you a question. How do you relate to God? Is he distant and far? You know, too many people, and even some Christians, refer to him as the big guy in the sky or the man upstairs. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, we can read, For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Now our text answers the question of how is God to be your God? Seldom do we think that our hearts and inmost being were created for the dwelling of God. We can have the love of parents or children fill our hearts and bringing us joy and happiness. But how about the living God for whom our heart was really made? The psalmist referred to God as the God of my life. He goes on and he says, you are my strength. You are the one who is my joy and happiness. How then is God our strength? How is God our joy and happiness and the essence of your life? Well, the answer is in God, what God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God. How would your life be different? How would your life change if you truly, truly believed it? If you believe that God lived in you, no longer having any fear or doubt of his presence in your life and his promise to do for you all that you need, how would that change? How would it change you? Let me tell you about five thoughts to help you see the essence of the Christian life, this, this indwelling of God. First of all, why was mankind created? We were created in God's image and likeness. As Genesis 1.27 says, so, so God created human beings in his own image. We were created for the indwelling of God. We were created to share with God his divine perfection and blessedness. God wants to live in us. He wants to be our very life. Leviticus 11.44, be holy because I am holy. And when God is living in you, this is a, a, a part of us that can be attained. As far as mankind is capable, it is God's desire that we be as holy and good and blessed as he is. All that is God, all that God has himself, he desires for us to be in us. And we will have all that is of God. All this is to prepare us for our dwelling with God now and for eternity. Now it's only possible by God living within us. In that way we partake of his image, we partake of his likeness. It's comparable to a, a light bulb. In and of itself a light bulb can do nothing but break when it drops. But given the power of electricity, the bulb lights up and shines and gives light. So God created humans that he might be the power and the light of their life. This is truly a holy partnership. As one yields and offers their life to God, he gives himself to us in order to live his life through us. Now another thought to help you see the essence of the Christian life, this indwelling of God, is the consequence of sin. The consequence of sin. Now, God had made man to be his home, his temple, where his presence would dwell, his power and his will would dwell. But sin robbed both God and man of that indwelling. Let me read to you, and perhaps if you have your Bible, why don't you read along with me from Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, beginning at verse 1 through 7. Why don't you get your Bible? I hope you have it there. Let's read it together. Follow along. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat 
nor shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Now, the essence of Satan's temptation in the garden was this. Would man yield to God, allowing his will and rule to reign? Or would man yield to his own will and let self rule and be master? That day in the garden, the choice was made. And God was dethroned out of his temple and self was enthroned into the heart of man. God is dethroned. Self is enthroned. Hear what 2 Thessalonians has to say. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. In describing the man of lawlessness, he says, He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God, claiming that he himself is God. Now, this is not just a description of the coming man of sin, but it accurately describes the nature of self when it is seated on the throne of our heart, sitting in the temple of God as God, sitting in the temple where God is to be sitting. The essence of the Christian life, the indwelling of God, further leads us to the work of redemption. When sin entered the world, mankind lost the life of God dwelling within. In essence, we became dead to the life of God through the sin of Adam that comes to us by birth when we are born. We are born into it. We are born in sin. We are born with sin. And to be freed from this sin, mankind must also die to it. The second Adam, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, died to sin in our place as the perfect sacrifice and thereby was able to redeem us and win us back the life that we had been created for, this indwelling of God. Christ came to earth to demonstrate the divine life in man and what that would look like. He was our example. He showed us the possibility and blessedness of being a person in whom God is living his life. Verse 2, 17. Therefore it was necessary for him to be, to be made in every respect like us, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the world, of people. Now how was Christ able to do this? Well, Colossians 1.19 says, For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And as you examine the life of Christ, you will discover a man who needed to sleep, who got hungry, who got tired, who even cried at times and suffered very much, just as we do. But his ability to do and to bear all came from his heavenly Father dwelling in him. Christ showed us how we can live and how God would enable us to live. And then this brings us to the, the indwelling that is fulfilled, the indwelling fulfilled. This indwelling and the essence of the Christian life was fulfilled at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out. Again, let's read from the scriptures if you'd open your Bible to the book of Acts, chapter 2. Acts, chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 4. Now when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now Christ, who had been with the disciples on earth, but was not in them, came back to them in the Spirit to dwell in them, just as he had before dwelt with them. But now he dwelt in them. Look at the change in the life of the disciples. As you read from the day of Pentecost on, their selfishness turns into love, their pride into humility, their fear of suffering into boldness and joy, their unbelief into an assured faith, their weakness into power. And all this was due to the glorified Christ to, who came to dwell in them as their life. Pentecost is that event by which God regains possession of his temples. God could again dwell in mankind as he had before the sin of Adam. And so this leads us to the last thought of the day, claiming the promise. Claiming this promise. As you may and probably do unknowingly, look at the state of the church today. You may be saying to yourself that you cannot see many believers whose hearts are the temple of God. You see coldness of heart. You see worldliness. You see selfishness. You see sin and wishy-washy faith at times being lived out. This can make us doubt as to whether there are any Christians at all. It is sad when we see these things, when we seldom speak up for God, when we show little delight for his word, when we have little patience or devotion to worship him, to pray to him, when we even doubt that a life of power in the spirit even exists. It's no wonder, it's no wonder we don't understand or claim the promise, I will live in them and walk among them, I will be their God. Have you yet claimed this indwelling? Do you seek it for your life? You begin by confessing. Confessing how little you have sought to live is God's temple. God residing and dwelling on the throne of your life. Confessing your helplessness, your inability to live the kind of life that God is calling you to. You have tried to change and be better, but you have failed and you fail. And we will continue to fail until nothing less is needed, until nothing less is offered than for God to become your very life. I will live in them, he said. Don't allow any thought or feeling of unworthiness to detract you. That's only the enemy. Don't allow any thought or feeling of weakness to hold you back. It's not our strength, it's his strength. You come not on your own merit, but you come in that of Christ the Savior. In Jesus' name, we come. And so, in closing, look at the verse that comes right after that text that we began with this morning, today. In verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, Therefore, come out from among unbelievers. Separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you. Come out from all that is of the world. Come out from all that is religious. It's not about religion. It's about Jesus and a relationship with him residing within you, ruling your life, being your very life. Come out from all that is inconsistent with being God's holy temple. Come out from all that stuff. Leave it all behind. Don't touch their filthy things. Don't get involved. Don't look. Don't see. Don't be inquisitive in those things. Come out and be separate. Separate yourself unto God. Come out and take your stand as one who will live a life different from the crowd around you. It's so easy to live like the crowd. That's what the crowd wants. That's what the crowd likes. But you're not part of the crowd. 
you're part of God's family. Come out and separate yourself unto him and to him alone. And he will come, is the promise, and he will come and live in you. And he will live through you. And he will be your very life, your very strength. He will be all that you need for now and forevermore. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen. Let me pray with you. Father God, this promise of your indwelling in the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe, Lord, that you are there within every one who has confessed your name and come to seek you. But we're not allowing you to rule in our lives. And I just pray, God, that you will give us understanding and that you will help us to see that we need to die to self that we need to let self go, that every day we must choose who will reign, who will reign on that throne. Will it be self or will it will be you, Lord Jesus? Will it be your Holy Spirit? Will it be us? Lord, give us the strength to choose you and to let go of self and this self life and trust you for all of life and life to come that all the things that we face, the trials, the tribulations, the hardships, the heartaches, the difficulties, the sicknesses, the everything that comes into our lives that is an oppression and a hardship and a difficulty, you will get us through. You will get us through to the life to come, the life that will be with you forever and ever. Lord, give us that ability to choose you every day and allow you to be our life, our very life. Bless everyone who's been listening. Bless everyone, I pray, whatever situation they find themselves in, may they know, Lord Jesus, that you are the answer. You are the answer for their issues and for their life, and you are the answer for the whole world. The whole world, you are the answer. If the world would only look to see and receive and accept you, I pray, Lord Jesus, come and indwell in each of us, I pray, in power, in all that you are. Amen. Amen. God bless you.